today's going to be one of those days because we, uh, man, man, we were minding our own business. We were. We were minding our own business. Doing our own thing. Enjoying family time. We were watching the Oscars, and I guess, you know, I was just like, you know what? We're having a meeting. The kids were in the room. Why don't we just turn on the TV? We'll keep it in the background. But what happened was Will Smith was up for an Oscar. It was his year. We so were proud of him. It. So it's excited. Long overdue. Long overdue. Long overdue. Like in an angry way. <laughs> like long overdue. Like if he don't get it this time, we about, we to, tear this, we about to tear this sucker down. We're going to boycott <laughs> like they tried to a couple years ago. And it didn't work. It didn't work um, out. So, you know, from all of the uh, um, interviews and all of the, the press conferences, such grace. And then here we have this incident that happened. So if you haven't seen it, let's just give you a quick recap. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> That was, a, that was a nice one, okay. I'm out here, uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Will Smith did Oh, I could, oh, okay. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Okay. Okay. This was the smack, as you said, that was felt around the world, right? <laughs> it was two characters in this, in this story. You had Will Smith against uh, Chris Rock fighting over his woman, Jada Smith. But it wasn't about them. It was so much bigger than them. Social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter has been very um, opinionated about their relationship. So when he was smacking Chris Rock, he was smacking all of the critics. He responded to anyone who's ever had a criticism by responding to Chris Rock in that moment. So when Chris Rock felt it, technically we all felt that smack because he was coming for everybody who had anything negative to say ever about their relationship. But did you notice even after Will went up there, like he almost had like a smirk on his face. Like when he came back from slapping. Right. So the whole moment was very awkward and strange because in all of us as an audience, we're trying to figure out what just happened here. Did we really see what it is that we saw? Adam says the Oscars hire comedians like Chris Rock so he can make jokes just like he did. Will Smith was laughing at all the other jokes all night, which is a powerful point because all night Will is laughing at jokes. And guess what? Chris, when he had his you know, moments, he, that's all he does is do digs. Jada Pinkett, she has alopecia. So when Chris Rock made the statement, um, looking forward to seeing you in, what was it? Um, you got G.I. It, Jane. G.I. Jane, right. Uh, he mentions that in the joke. And Will Smith, if you look at his reaction, He laughed. laughed. He laughed. He laughed. It was actually funny. It was good. Then he looked over to his wife, and she did what? She, she rolled her she eyes rolled and was just eyes. like... Like she was not pleased. Yes. Clearly she was not pleased by the joke. One thing that really is disturbing to me after the slap incident is, first of all, these are two comedians, you know? Like they both know the craft. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't get to this level without knowing protocol. Right. But because Will Smith walked up on that stage and slapped the cooth out of him, okay? Now we have to talk about something else. Now we have to talk about safety. Now we have to consider what we say as comedians. Am, is there going yeah. to be some level of ramifications? Are people going to throw things at me? Will people say things to me? Will people slap, punch, and hit me? Will people have weapons? Do you know what I'm saying? Because you yeah. invited violence mm -hmm. into comedy, but your profession is a comedian. It's confusing. Um, it says, if Chris fell to the floor, hit his head, and died, then what? Mm. That's the point. Let's talk about, you know, how is he being perceived? You know, like his image, what did that do for him? I think, I think the world would be split on it because if we take this to relationship terms, he became the defender, right? Something rose up in him and he's gotta now protect his woman because somebody said something. One thing that I will say is that I respect the need as a man for him to be a protector. 
But at the end of the day, what are you co-signing by becoming mm. violent as a comedian towards another, a fellow comedian? In the midst of, of um, Will trying to rise up and be a man and be a protector, I think the moment was the wrong moment. Um, you know, it wasn't just his moment. It was so many people's moment. Absolutely. It was Venus and Serena's moment it and was. their whole family's moment. It was all the people that participated in that film and made that film become what it was where King Richard became King Richard and not some mean, you know, uh, controlling, manipulative person that people didn't understand who created the biggest stars in tennis ever. You know, like that's a fact. It was an amazing opportunity to highlight all of that. And what it came down to was a man's over emotionalizing of a situation. He over he he was crying and he made it about him. He did make it about he him. He made it about what he's he going through. He made it about him being a man and having to protect. And he kind of threw King Richard under the bus. He did. Because he said, Now I'm the same crazy father that all you've been complaining about. So I look like the crazy father, just like they said. <laughs> I look like crazy father, just like they said about Richard Williams. What they tried to redefine in that movie, he in essence countered it with his public display, really showing the true character of Sir Richard in terms of how he demonstrated himself. No wife should want her husband to be able to control his emotions and act in that manner. He embarrassed his legacy in front of colleagues, directors, production, and security. And he knew it, y'all. He knew it because that debacle of a speech where he was just bumbling, fumbling, snotting, they actually had to turn the camera off because it was just a mess. He was sitting there after he made that, that, um, it, that decision right to slap a man on public television in front of the world for a joke and he's a comedian he made Ooh. that decision and then he had to figure out the entire time how am i going to tie this mm. in to why did i do this how am i going to do a speech and it just didn't land well what i didn't like about the speech is that you justified instead of taking that moment and honoring all the people that need to be honored you justified why you why you became violent with a man on public TV. And, and that's a no. And apologize to everyone but Chris Rock. Because Chris Rock used the power of the mic to say to something that was disrespectful, he could have used the power of the same mic to say something that was affirming and edifying to his wife, and he could have corrected Chris Rock through the microphone, right? The same way, he resorted to physical violence. He made it about him, but let's talk about how much of a G Chris Rock was for his response and his reaction, because you gotta understand, this is live TV. This is a global event and things live on the internet forever. So imagine experiencing this and you're thinking about 25 different things. How do I react? How do I respond? To me, the, the professionalism, the emotional uh, stability that he maintained, the level of couth, the wisdom that he operated in, he wasn't just re representing himself. He was representing other comedians in his reaction to what Will Smith did. And I thought he handled it I did spectacularly. Too. One thing that stood out to me as well, going back to his seat and sitting down, Jada was very happy after that. I think he made the wrong choice in how he defended his wife because there were so many things he could have done. He could have whispered into her ear. He could have said anything and everything. Mm -hmm. He could have, like you said, used that mic to retaliate and say something you know, sn snarky back. But in that moment, he served his wife. He didn't do it in the best way. Yeah. But he did. Now everybody has different needs. Maybe she. Maybe they had a fight. I need you to fight for me, Will. Fight for me. You know who knows? No, you just don't know what was going on. And he was like, "Bet you want you, you need me to fight for you." And he went and slapped that joker. And there were a thousand other ways that yeah. he could handle it. Now he's going to have to circle back to this moment. He's going to have to apologize to everybody, to the Academy, to, to Venus and Serena and the producers of the show and all the movie that they made. Everybody that was disrespected in that moment because of his slap, he's going to have to acknowledge and apologize. Dr. Romney, help him out. To me, this was more of Will Smith being a male, not operating in his true authentic manhood. To your point, as a defender, it is our job to defend and protect. We talk about there's four pillars of a man's heart. There's the king, there's the warrior, there's the mentor, there's the friend. The warrior is given strength in order to protect. But the way in which you do that, you really have to be wise and careful in your approach. 
First time ever in his career, his highest moment, the peak, the zenith of his career, where he gets an Oscar, Finally. the award of all time. Well, he should have had it years ago, yes. and it will always be tainted Ooh. by the worst moment. We could talk about this topic um, literally forever. What a great topic, but I think it does speak to other issues that we need to talk about. So we're going to put this to rest, but reference this as we talk about other things. Listen, guys, we hope you got something out of this conversation. You're listening to the Cowboys Academy show. Tune in for the rest of the week. We got some great content for you. Love you. See you soon.